it was sort of the end of the era of intensive farm labor and into a period where maybe it had flipped to probably 90% machine harvest, chemical weed control. So the uh, African American population on plantations was essentially obsolete. Uh, and yet the foundations of living were, were based in the old plantation economy. Like when you wanted to see a physician, you had to first be in the good graces of the boss man and hope the boss man would understand that your arm is really hurting or otherwise the boss man wouldn't stand for a visit to, to the doctor and most black people couldn't see a physician unless the boss man agreed to, uh, to be financially responsible. There were populations living at levels that most Americans associated with uh, third world conditions. And uh, first, I think there was clearly a shock to many Americans as photographers, news reporters and so forth associated really with the civil rights movement began to see these conditions and report on some of them. I suspect that's the way Jack got hooked into Mississippi. I had also been part of the civil rights movement since I was a teenager and got to Mississippi in the summer of 1964 mm -hmm. with an organization that had spontaneously formed to be uh, sort of the medical arm of the civil rights movement, certainly for Freedom Summer uh, that year in 64. And in the course of that, uh, took a long look around and realized I didn't have to go to Africa or Latin America or Southeast Asia, we had it here. Uh, it wasn't all that linear. It took me about three months to remember the model that as a medical student years before, in 1957, I had studied in South Africa of all places where community health centers were invented uh, and realize that it might be indeed applicable to the United States. And we were lucky, as John has indicated, uh, with the temper of the times. Michael Harrington had published The Other America. The country had just, as it does every 50 years or so, transiently rediscovered poverty and decided uh, that something ought to be done about it. Really under the impetus of the civil rights movement, uh, the country started to become aware again of these populations and pockets and areas of misery. And uh, Lyndon Johnson uh, created the Office of, and the Congress created the Office of Economic Opportunity and the War on Poverty, so-called. And there was a spirit of saying, uh, we are really going to try for a while to intervene and change these things. And they weren't thinking, that agency at least, uh, about health and health care in the beginning. But it is the way we came in the door because those needs were so obvious. But what instantly became obvious is that uh, the health needs related in part to the kind of lack of access to any kind of care that John has described, but at a more fundamental level, they, they related to the fact that people were unemployed, that people were hungry, that there was literally near starvation, uh, that people were drinking water out of the drainage ditch, that people were living in shacks unfit for human habitation, that an entire support system had collapsed. Those things all 40 years later have a fancy name called the social determinants of health, but you couldn't miss them if you were living among them. I should add that these things applied equally, but more subtly in urban public housing, for example, at a place like Columbia Point. We should mention that as well, because these are not just rural problems and they are not just uh, African-American problems.